You know, it's funny, sometimes the simplest things are actually really tricky to do. One of those simple things is inserting a line break exactly where you want it to go when you're data merging content from a spreadsheet into InDesign. Now, this is one simple way you can do it. Probably not the best way and probably will become obsolete by the time someone figures out how to do this properly. But in the meantime, I find this very useful and hopefully you will too. Let's check it out. When you turn hidden characters on in InDesign, you can see that there are actual characters that say, hey, this is a paragraph break, so you should actually make a new paragraph here. Uh, that's what this character is over here that you can see. Um, now, the problem is that when you're using data merge and using spreadsheets, uh, there isn't really that character you can drop in there. If you just manually insert a, a, a line break or try to just hit enter or return, uh, it'll just go to the next uh, cell. If you force a line break within a cell, uh, then when you export it to a CSV, it'll actually register as a new row and that'll just break your entire spreadsheet. So I've found a, a small, simple little trick that is based on the same techniques that you saw in the previous episode about how to make a dingbat uh, icon inside text. So here's what you do. In your spreadsheet, find a string of characters that you know for sure will not be appearing in any old place uh, inside normal body copy. In this case, I've chosen the string of characters YYY. Uh, and I also, also make sure that I have uh, spaces before and after that because it'll be important that InDesign recognizes that this YYY is an entire separate word on its own. And I want to show you what this looks like when you just uh, data merge it into the, uh, into the file without any paragraph styles or anything. This is what it looks like. You have XX food and all that stuff. All those will be replaced with icons, but the thing I wanted to point out is this YYY. What happens there? Well, uh, I figure it's easiest if I can just show you. I'll select this paragraph and apply the module body style that I have set up here. And boom, that's all been replaced. You can see, I'll zoom in here, Unlike here, um, up in the header, where I have a paragraph break manually inserted, uh, I don't actually have anything uh, here. There's no, there's no paragraph break here. So why is the line breaking where I'm telling it to? Well, it's because that it's interpreting that YYY uh, in a different way than any other uh, text. Let's take a closer look at what's going on inside the module body paragraph style. If you look in the grep styles within this paragraph style, you can see a whole bunch of stuff here that's telling uh, telling the paragraph style to change certain characters uh, or strings of characters into icons. But the uh, the big thing here is I have this uh, uh, style called line break, and I'm applying it to any instance where there is a space, YYY, followed by a space. That's what these slashes and these characters mean together. So what's going on with the line break character style? What's so special about that, that it's uh, making, uh, making InDesign interpret that as a line break? So these are the attributes that I've set for line break. Uh, I've set the size to just be arbitrary to be 14 point, but the important thing is I've set the letting to be zero. That means that if it's on its own line of text, then it will have essentially zero space in between uh, that line of text and any other lines of text. Uh, I've set the character color to be invisible so that you cannot see any of these characters that have this character style applied to them. Uh, for now, I'm just so you can see what I'm actually working on, I will set this to be magenta. And you can see this little line appear just underneath these little hamburger icons. Uh, I'll turn it on and off just so you can see it you know, go on and off again. And you can see that little line. What that line is is not actually a line, it's actually text. But I've set the scale to be a vertical 1%. That means it's squished down to be as short as I can get it. Um, and I've set the horizontal scale to be quite wide. Horizontal scale is set to 577. Now that wasn't arbitrary. Uh, it's taking into account the width of my text frame uh, and how wide I can make these uh, characters so that InDesign will interpret this single string of characters to be a word that is so long that it has no choice but to just automatically uh, break and go down to the next line. And that word is so long that it can't fit any other text on that same line in which it appears, so it makes another break after that word. If you set your horizontal scale to be too wide, for example, now I'm going into the 680s, 60, 800. Ah, now, see, that word now is too wide to fit within my text frame, and so now the text has become overset. 
that so that's why I've chosen a particular horizontal scale for this text. I want it to be 577 because it's just enough so that it can fit within my oddly shaped text frame here uh, without causing overset text or any other any other uh, unusual errors that uh, may occur when I actually export this. So if I return this back to uh, invisible, then you just can't you can't see it at all. Hopefully that's clear and hopefully that helps you design your cards or tiles for your board game. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and support the rest of this series on Patreon.